and it was just like a Zoom session, and I had my camera there and I recorded it, and then I played it back afterwards where I learned about all the, the stuff that you don't see in the brochures. Mm -hmm. And you can download this brochure anytime you want um, from my website or from Markland's website. Um, but he did a, a, a presentation a few weeks ago on the summer items, and it's amazing. I'm always impressed with the amount of knowledge and um, effort and, and, and thought that goes into these models because you think, oh, they just come out with something new or it's a repaint of something old. And, you know, th there's a lot more thought that goes into these things. And I'm not selling, trying to sell anybody anything. I, I enjoy this stuff just as much as the next person. But I've never really given a whole lot of thought as to how much thinking really does go into the items that they that they come up with and, and the whys and the wherefores and the history behind both the, 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 the real ones and as well as, well as the, the prototypes. So um, I'm going to try and share with you here. Uh, I've got five pages of notes. I'm going to try and read through them quickly. <laughs> but at the same time, give give everybody a little bit of insight as to what's going on because I know Mike has something else I want to present. To them, so. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyhow, briefly, this is a uh, this is a picture of the, uh, what, as it was described to me, uh, the old Berlin uh, train station and the significance of the, the Class 17 locomotive there is because this is the, uh, uh, the last in their series of five what they call museum locomotives. And uh, the real one is on display uh, at the uh, uh, Museum of uh, Transportation and Technology in Berlin. I don't know if anybody's ever had the the good fortune to go there. I, I, I went there once. I just happened to be in Berlin. And they knew I was interested in trains. And so they said, oh, well, you really need to go there. And uh, it's uh, they have more than trains at this museum. But the, the few trains that they have there really are, are kind of neat. And it's in a nice 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 part of town. Anyhow, the um, the original uh, the original class 17 is this next slide is something else. That's that's the one scale model. So uh, French lady. Uh, yeah. This is the. Uh, let me go. Let me go back to the. Let me go back to the, the class 17, which will be on, a, on another on another page here. But the way this was described uh, in the presentation was that the original Mark apparently had a class 17 that they made earlier, and they used to have a lot of uh, a lot of problems with the original model as far as the weight distribution. And, and it was in, a, in the Markman program a very short time. And this, this new one is a completely new version. Uh, it has a short coupling between the, the boiler and the tender. And you can, you can look, look, look underneath it. And it's got lots of the digital functions and everything. And um, the one in the museum apparently is, is cut away so you can see the, uh, how, how a real steam locomotive works if you've ever been to the um, Deutsches Museum in, uh, in Munich, they have uh, a similar type of setup there. And for those of you who don't know exactly how a steam locomotive works, and as many as I've seen, I still don't exactly understand how it works, but, but, it, but it's cool to see them uh, cut away like that. Anyhow, um, the, the, real, the real 17 that's in the museum uh, doesn't, doesn't have its tender anymore, which is, I guess, one of the reasons they decided, well, there's no, no harm at this point to cut, cut part of it away and look at it. Okay, and uh, this locomotive, the, the new after the main model after the French lady, the German uh, class 08, that's a new uh, locomotive in, in one scale. And if we want to get into the one scale offerings for the summer, I don't know if anybody's interested in the larger scale. I, I can I can speak I can speak to them later on. I do have them in my notes here as well. I can't afford to sell both kidneys. <laughs> um, there's a page here that, that talks about the new Vectron locomotives. I'll be going into a lot of detail of that briefly, but you can read you can read all about this. I don't have to read this stuff uh, to you. There's going to be a new Danish version as well. We'll get into that shortly here. <laughs> Scandinavians are drooling. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a page again. This, these are the these are the these are the four locomotives um, that were part of that that five year program and this is and this is the fifth one. Man, I got a spam call coming here, which I will get rid of. There. It's the catalogs being delivered. <laughs> yeah, that could could be. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, 
mean, here's all the details on the class 17 that you can, you can, you can read about. There's nothing I can tell you other than it's, it's completely, it says they're completely new, new tooling, new type of motor, uh, the firebox, smoke unit built in, the, the whole, the whole, the whole bit. Okay. Let's get on to the, the, there's a little bit of a lag here every time I, okay. Uh, one of one of one of one of one of the very popular items this year is this uh, wind power state car set. It's actually a series of four cars. This is this is the one that has the the three the three blades on it. And I think the next page has shows the the full set somewhere. There we go. And the way Mark them described this is this is their green technology. Uh, and one of the three Vectron locomotives <coughs> is, is, was on a previous page, we'll get to that, to, to echo that, the green technology uh, theme. Uh, this car set, as it was described, you, it, it wasn't designed to actually, where you could take all the parts off and build a model. You, you can, only it wouldn't be a complete model, so it really was designed more to be, to, to leave them on the state cars than to take them off and, and build a windmill as, as such, but with all the necessary parts. Are there, so. Um, but you could 3D print a. You could. And you have could it set up on your layout. I guess. I guess you could. Yep. You put it outside. The wind could power it, and then drive the train. So I just put it in the flat car. <laughs> uh, I guess. I guess the I guess the the the, the Dostis Green Vectron is coming up here. There are three new Vectron locomotives. Uh, I guess it's a class 193. And I don't want to skip by. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, <coughs> apparently, there, was, there, there, there have been this, these Vectrons, these Class 193s in the, in the Markham program before, but it was more for the, the startup or the hobby line. And this one has a lot of new tooling. Um, there's, and there's so many, so many more what they call professional aspects. There's a to follow the cursor here. There are handrails here by the driver's door. There are handrails under the windows. There are handrails uh, by the lights here. This is all new, um, all new for this model. The, the the body shell itself is much heavier metal. They're putting as many as three and sometimes four pantographs, and in the, in the versions uh, that, that that traverse multiple countries in Europe. Uh, all, each of the four pantographs is different. All the handle different type of voltage and current, and, and, and they really are different. They're in real life they're different, and the design on the Markham locomotive they're all different pantographs as well. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make this as, as realistic uh, as possible. So the Dostis green here is the uh, this is green. So again the green theme of the, of the whole thing. Um, the, the 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 wheel trucks uh, also depending on the type of safety equipment that these. Uh, the bogies of these wheel trucks have to support have been redesigned, and they're using different ones and different models. The they're, they're printing um, some type of 3D type of thing. The design on the wheels, so they look much more realistic. You can see they've got uh, twin pin headlights here. Uh, I'm trying to go through my notes here to see if I'm missing anything. Uh, engineers' cab lighting uh, is different for different. The, 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 configurations depending on the country. Uh, they actually went to Stuttgart to, to record motor sounds for, for this one. So it's really a totally, all, all three of them are totally new designs. Uh, uh, the new new type of um, identification scheme here, if you notice the D slash DV, the D means for Germany. Uh, all the locomotives in Europe now are getting this type of um, um, lettering, if you will. Our identification where the first letter is the country, in this case D for Deutschland for Germany, and then DB to show who owns the locomotive, in this case the Deutsche Bundespark. So, um, you know, you see all these Vectrons and you say, oh, they're just reprinting the same thing over and over. Uh, there, there are three <coughs> models out with different paint schemes, but they're going to have different uh, the lighting, different sounds, different pantographs, uh, different wheel trucks. So they are all going to be uh, unique until, to, to the, the different models themselves. So it's, uh, it's kind, of, kind, of, kind of exciting. Uh, I know earlier this year they, they had, um, that was first announced, the, the, the one for the Danish Railways, which we'll get to later on in the program, because that, that's got stuff new in it itself. Apparently they haven't built a new, introduced a new locomotive in Denmark in nearly 30.
30 years. So apparently the Danish people are very, very excited about that. See, all, the, all these things you learn that you, know, you, don't, you just don't see in the brochure. So I found this uh, kind of fascinating myself. Is, is the logo already available? Do you have it already? In, in it, has not, it has not yet been delivered. Okay. No. And here's a picture showing uh, a typical um, arrangement here with the locomotive and, the, and that uh, windmill car set, which looks very, very nice. And this is a special yeah. dealer initiative logo set. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's that's something I should have mentioned. Thank that's you, Richard. These 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 yeah. are <clears throat> these are called. You see this little emblem down here. This little stylized uh, locomotive in the form shape of an M. These these are all MHI items, which means they're being made specifically or, or primarily for people who have subscriptions. I do get a couple of subscriptions, but they're very limited production. So this is the type of thing that uh, if anybody. If anybody wants one, uh, let let me know, and I'll see if I can still order it. Because I know I've ordered a lot of the, uh, a lot of these windmill cars. Some people order two or three windmill car sets. So um, if anybody wants one, please please do let me know. Okay. Let's see. Uh, this uh, also an MHI item, but they they're called it. Most of the MHI items are normally. Uh, designated for for sale only through subscriptions. This one, for some reason, is not, which means they're they're probably going to produce a lot more, uh, anticipating that how popular they're going to be. I'm going to look at my uh, my notes here. There are two different. Uh, this is a one that's not exactly to scale or a one to a hundred scale. Uh, there are two different types of cars here. Some of the rounded uh, roofs and, and some of the angled roof. Okay, like the top car, you can see. Is a different type of roof than, than, the, than the, the two bottom ones. Uh, there's going to be marker lights at, at one of the end cars. This particular train um, was used for more like um, lo local service um, uh, in, in and around the, the Frankfurt uh, area, like going to B Spot uh, and, and nearby towns. Uh, previous uh, versions of this set would have been to connect uh, towns further away uh, to, to, the, to the airport. So that, that was a distinction. That, that was made, and there's a two second class cars here and uh, a first second class car. The locomotive, the 33708 shown here at the bottom, would be something uh, you know appropriate or typical. That's not part of the of the summer items, but the but the car set is, and that that too has been uh, uh, as a very popular uh, set. A bunch of Shuko items here. Uh, I've already been sent out emails with pictures of all the individual. I think there's Two packs of 12, yeah, it says here 24 part display, two packs of 12. I've actually sent out images if somebody wants me to send it out again. I didn't make it part of this presentation, presentation, but there are 12 different vehicles. There's 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 Porsches, there's VWs, there's, there's uh, Mercedes. It's, it's a nice uh, variety, and um, a number of people have asked if, if you can buy those the, the cars individually themselves, not part of the set. And that uh, and individual dealers may, may be breaking these apart, but it's not like I could order three or four of one of these. They have to be purchased by the dealer as a complete set of, uh, of 12 or two, two times 12 or 24 different cars. So, so Robert, I had ordered a 12 pack from you. I don't know if that's the same one, but it's on display upstairs when everybody's name goes up. Oh, we'll see it. Okay. I don't think it's this one. Okay. I don't think this one's been delivered yet. <coughs> yeah. All right. So if that was a different one, I probably want one. <laughs> and this, this is I'm I'm really surprised how popular these these sets are with like they come with so many different cars because they're 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 the cars are listed you know about less than ten dollars each so a full, even a full set of twelve is, is still isn't that much money. There's also a Land Rover here that uh, is meant to go on a rail. No, it's not it's not motorized though they do show it here riding on some seat track. And then in keeping in keeping with the theme of um, what they call the strong brands, uh, and again, these are all MHI items. So, and, and I'm going to say it several times here. I'm sorry for the sound like I'm repeating myself, but they are in shorter supply. They're not as readily available as some of the, the regular items in the in the Shuko program. Uh, they've had a couple of uh, um, uh, sets already called the strong brands, where Marco has put together um, uh, a series of, of four vans or, or trucks that. Uh, that kind of go together in, in some in some manner or fashion. The, these all have, in, interestingly enough, these all happen to be manufacturers of washing machines. Yeah. 
<laughs> they, they make they, they, some of them make other things as well. Obviously, yeah. Phillips and Mille make different things, but but, but Lavoisier not the, the main product is, is is washing machines. But it's a it's a nice assortment and it it, it goes well. Uh, this is a starter set, uh, probably not not uh, you know, something that most of you guys would be interested in. But it's a nice starter set. It's got uh, it's actually I don't I didn't even bother to look up the price I should have, but it comes with a mobile station and track and a, and a power pack connect box. Locomotive has a blinking light, full sounds, and and Marplin's uh, and and some nice cars. And Marplin's position, even though it's not necessarily prototypical, um, but uh, it's just a very very nice and reasonably priced starter set. The, the point uh, that the export manager was making was that. No other manufacturer has a starter set that has uh, such a nice locomotive and full sounds uh, at, at this price point. So it's just something. Uh, if somebody's interested, I'll, I can look up a price easily. It's probably on my website. I'm sure it's on my on my website. Um, what's coming next are a couple of uh, another nice photo. Okay. These are two sets of Coca-Cola cars. Uh, the top set is, is a fantasy paint. It's not a real paint scheme. They don't, it's not a logo or something. Obviously, Coca-Cola had to approve it uh, for Markland's design, but it's not something that, that, that you would see a, a, as, a, as a real car. These are, the first two here are, are, are patterned or fashioned after the, um, uh, the Markland sliding wall uh, design of boxcars. If you know they're different, this one, Bottom one here has the red uh, DB cargo colored, if you will, roof uh, paint scheme. This one's a more brownish, darker color. They wanted to make it different looking. The 86 here represents uh, 1886. Apparently, that, I think that's the, the, the year Coca-Cola was first uh, mm -hmm. uh, invented, discovered, whatever. So it's the proper stuff with the cocaine in it. Yep. There, there you go. The bottom the pair here, though, this is this is a, a, a the Swiss uh, uh, type of car, the H H uh, sliding wall box car set with with the real uh, Coca Cola design on it. Uh, very uh, it a, has fish belly side sills. That is. Anyhow, it's, it's a very nice, attractive car, and everything's obviously done here with the approval of Coca Cola. And to go along with this, they've got a local, they've got a, they've got a, they've got a, they got a, they got a wow. Taurus style of, I've never <laughs> looked at it. It's very, it's very 90s. Very 90s, yes, very 90s. Well, you know, it's, it, you know, a lot of people like Coca Cola, like, a lot of people <coughs> like this, this type of thing. I have several people who, they even got the, 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 the there was a, I think an ABA uh, F7 set with Coca Cola. You know, a lot of people like this. Yeah, it's like Hornby do it. Yeah, they did Star Wars. No, yeah, they have like the whole LGB Coca Cola set and yeah. stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, I had a customer once, I think in Australia, who wanted a bunch of uh, the glass tank cars because he wanted to put liquor in them and run them around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> little, little straws in them. So, you know, to, 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 eat, to each his own. Yeah, yeah. One different things. Know, exactly. <laughs> Don't give me ideas. <laughs> uh, this flat car here is a, is a design for carrying Aero 4 military equipment. Um, what was pointed out, which you can't really see here, um, the, the, these buffers, they, they have little ramps that come here. Apparently, these are, in, in real life, these are um, strung together, and they have little ramps that go over the buffers. So you can actually drive a vehicle across several empty cars to get it on and off the train. Mm, it's like the auto train or whatever. Yeah, exa yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's something that I, I never would have even thought of and never even known had he not, uh, well, um, uh, oh, it says here, right here it says here, without platform railings with drive over plates above the buffers. So that's actually you know, made, made very, very prototypical. Now on the bottom line, the bottom uh, here is for any of you who've ordered some of the, what they call the Marklin store, um, I'll give just a very, very brief history on these types of things. Well, before Marklin went into bankruptcy back in the, you know, back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, so Marklin came up with this, this, this theme, or, or if you will, to, for specialty stores for the, to, to support their bigger dealers. It was called the Marklin uh, uh, Shop and Shop or Marklin stores yeah. or that type of thing where, where dealers were 
were required actually to have uh, a separate part of their store relegated solely to Marklin items and they had to buy certain display. I've been to places where they had like five or six or ten display cases and I know what these things cost because I bought one of them. And these people, these people had like 20, 30, 40 thousand euros invested just in the display, forget the contents, just in the display cases them, themselves. It, it, it was uh, it was unbelievable, and then and then the company goes bankrupt, and everybody's sitting there with these display cases. They can't put product, and it just has marketing all over it. And it's like, it, you know, well, they're willing to sell some cheap. <laughs> <laughs> they, they still have them. I, 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 bought, I bought one of these display <laughs> cases. It cost me more to have it shipped to me than yeah. than, than the item itself was worth. Yeah. It came in this big thick wooden box. It's it, you. you could drop that thing off off the back of a truck, nothing would have broken it. <laughs> the way they packed this thing was unbelievable. Yeah. Anyhow, in more recent years, bring getting us to this model, in more recent years, the last three or four years, they've come up with a locomotive uh, and cars. This year it's just a couple of cars but they with with the Marklin store theme. And if you actually look it tell it only tells you there in the right right hand side there, it tells you the only the only stores that Marklin's going to be selling them through. Um, now, but I was able to, I don't, I'm not taking credit for it, but I was able to talk to the, 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 the U.S. distributor here, who's now, you know, we reestablished this warehouse in Missouri. I've talked them into letting me get these. And uh, uh, so last year I was able to get a bunch of the locomotives and the cars. This year, I, this year I didn't have to beat on them too much because they were able to supply them the last two years. They allowed the, the U.S. distributor to get them this year. Again, it's going to be a very limited number of cars. You won't see them on my website. They've asked dealers not to put this on their website. And, uh, and uh, uh, actually, it was interesting because a dealer in Florida, um, and I know him, he's on very good terms with him. He said, he, he, we were in a Zoom meeting, and he said, well, how are we supposed to market this stuff? 95% of our business is, is, is mail order and, and Internet business and that type of stuff. And he said, I'm paying $20,000 a month for, for, for floor space, and, and I sell three locomotives in a month. I need to be able to, and, and, and Marvin is not insensitive to this. They understand. Yeah. But in this particular case, for this particular model, they say, no, I don't want to see any advertising on websites and web pages and stuff. That doesn't mean I can't send out a thousand emails to people yeah. with pictures and descriptions, but yes, I want to see it on people's websites. So don't go to my website expecting to see this because in deference to their request, I'm, I'm not going to put it up there. But if you want these, and I believe this is the last, this is either the third third or fourth, I think one year they had two different cars, so depending on when you go three years, four different cars, this is the last set of cars for this particular series. Uh, not that you can't make a train of several of them, I think it's, it's very attractive, but if anybody wants uh, some, just again, just just let me know. You know you're not the idiot. Apart from the people who are gone. I, I, at first I didn't think much of it, but I think it is, a, it is attractive. Uh, it is on the way upstairs, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very self serving advertising. It's self serving advertising, but I think the dark gray and the red uh, color scheme goes, goes very, goes very nicely together. All right, this is the Swiss version. Uh, it's going to have uh, SVB specific sounds. Um, it's going to, ha it's going to have the same. Um, um, configuration of pantographs as the as the German version does. Uh, there's, there's also yeah, been a, 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 I think previously there was a Vecron that, was, that had a, that was strictly for running between Poland and Germany, but not designed to go into France and Germany and Italy. That, so it didn't have the same number or same style of pantographs. So they really are making the effort to make these things look as um, a prototypical as possible. Robert, that's a shop looking locomotive. It is this one this one's really really attractive. Uh, you probably can't see it on <laughs> you may not be able to see it on this one, but the but the Swiss have this 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 thing about na naming each locomotive uh, with a different city's name. Somewhere on here, it's going to say that this one is. Uh, oh, it's, it's up on the. See the black bit by the front window there? There's like. No, here? Up, 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 up. Yeah, up. A bit, a bit right, 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 right. Keep going right. No, there. Here. That's the name. I don't know what that is, but. I this, think that's the name. Anyhow, this one, this one has a town. It's, it's Lamotte, uh, yeah. L -I -M -A -T. I'm not sure where Lamotte is. The one is Lamotte 5, which is in Zurich. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the main drags along the. Uh, 
Oh, along the, the, uh, the, river. the river. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about this one being labeled the mod is Markman arranged with the town. They said, we want to be the only ones using this name. Hmm. And the town agreed. That's okay. Where I live in Katona, Martha Stewart wanted the exclusive use of the name Katona, and, and the town said, um. no. <laughs> <laughs> so I can understand what's going on here. But anyhow, the, the, the reason for that is now, and, and, the, and the, 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 the gentleman from Markman, but didn't make any bones about it. He said, but this way, we know that if you if you want another locomotive, we know with another town name on it, you can get it from Pico or Roco or somebody else. Okay, that's fine, and they'll be different, but you won't be able to get the Lamont one uh, from from somebody else also. And you might say, well, this is that's kind of a weird thing. I, I just got some information the other day on a locomotive, a real locomotive that was built. Uh, I think it's a Vectron. That was um, it's labeled. One half of it says Markman on it, and the other end says Pico. Mm. Wow! Wow! That's good. Wow. And my understanding is they're going to both companies are going to make models. One this. makes one, one makes the other. Right. Well, I believe and that somebody suggested that well, Mar what probably what will happen is Markman will be making the three rail version, and Pico might be making the two rail version. Yeah. But I find mm -hmm. that kind of interesting. Markman will be making something that says Pico on it, and Pico will be saying that says. Mark on it because it's just is that the land? I don't I don't know the history or whatever behind any of this, but the locomotive it's black on one, it's white with I don't know, it's, it's there's a diagonal line down the center uh, of it, and on the white one side it's white with the Pico red label on, on the other side it's so, black with the Mark on red label. It's, it's two faced, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then you have tricks as the two two rail version. So that makes it even more complicated. Well, I, I I don't I don't well I, I don't uh, yeah well I I don't know if they're going to make a, a Trix version of that maybe that may be the arrangement they have with Pico is that Markman will make the three rail and Pico will make a two rail version of the same thing because it, ha it can only have one road number and be the correct one and and obviously for this particular model the road number on this one uh, that Dostas Green one the, the the red one earlier that you saw there's only one of those in existence. Oh, uh, actual. There, there, there's really only one of those in real life, yeah. And uh, well, of course, it will have the correct road number, and I'm sure this one uh, with Lamont on it will have the correct road number for, for its prototype as well. We're going to get into the. I got some interesting things to tell you about some of the cars that this thing's carrying. Uh, I hope everybody's not getting too terribly bored with all this stuff. I, I just find so much stuff here that you don't read in the manual. Uh, about the, the, about the program. There it is, Lee. There it is. Oh, no, Oops. Like the, <coughs> you're right. There, oh, yeah. Yeah, and there it is, and it shows it. Sorry. Uh, it shows it where uh, yeah. Yeah. Where, the, where the root. This yeah. must be the root. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good eyes. Good eyes. Very good. I'm sitting near it. I get this stuff that comes in in boxes. I unpack it. I reship it to, 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 to everybody. And I, and I, I don't. I myself, I don't really take the time to look, but every now and then I'll open one and say, "Boy, this is really cool looking." You know, they, they re they've really improved the, uh, increased the level of detail. You know, the, the the tiny printing they can put on this stuff. If you've ever yeah. been to the factory to see how they do this, is just, just fascinating. Okay. Sad fact of life: as we get older, we can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> that's your phone can. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now this is the this is this whole uh, this whole series here that we're calling uh, something probably that's become more popular in the United States lately. The, the whole intermodal type of uh, yeah. design here, where you get you know from the train to the truck, the trucks on the train, and then the truck comes off, and it gets a truck gets a truck to the train, it gets trucked off the train. Anyhow, um, this is um, again until somebody actually pointed this out to me, I didn't notice this. Okay, you have three cars here. Uh, mm -hmm. But but they're not all the same. The top two. Uh, this is for intermodal transport, obviously. Um, but the top two, if you'll notice, are, are blue. And uh, let me read here what I said here. They, uh, yeah. Those are for Belgium. Oh. Uh, they're part of TL, TRW Brussels, uh, mm -hmm. which formerly would have had orange platforms. They changed their paint scheme to blue uh, not too long ago. Um, and uh, uh, whereas the uh, the brown one at the bottom is a uh, is, is is from from Austria, and I think so you, said, so you noted somewhere that uh, yeah this was a hand has a handbrake uh, platform. So you can see it's more than just the colors. The design of the car itself is, is different as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
it was described here that this particular train would have come from the south of Sweden through Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Italy, uh, going in an east-west direction um, for, for another a similar train going from Brussels uh, through the Czech Republic to Slovakia. Um, now, uh, Martha was pointed out there are already a couple of uh, uh, sets like this, uh, but the uh, uh, these, these are obviously going to be different, and these are of a newer, a newer design. You see, they're era six, which means they're going to have uh, on, on the, on the they're going to have yellow roofs with license plate numbers, so they can be read uh, uh, from, from oh, above. Yeah. They can be sensed from above, which will help in you know being able to, to, to position them uh, uh, automatically. So just a, just a nice looking set. I can't tell you how many times I've been uh, to the Munich East train station, and I've seen trains that have. 20, 30 of these LK W Walter cars on there. It's just one after the other. It gets, it gets, it, you, you don't know that if the, you should appreciate it because there's so many of the same, or it gets boring, you know, to see the same. I, I like a little variety. But they, they are, I think, the biggest, um, um, the biggest transporter uh, in, in Europe. Okay, there's some there's some significance to these. Um, these trans wagons, uh, the company. Um, uh, took over, uh, Transwagen took over the, the company Nordwagen a few years ago and uh, apparently didn't do anything to improve the looks of the cars and this is how they, this is how they look in real life. They haven't done anything to them. They really look nasty and dirty and uh, with, rust, with rust and repainted areas and such and Markman just wanted to make them look like the real thing. And look what they have hauling at it. Like this incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, with these other, uh, in the same theme, we've got. Uh, yeah, recycling. Okay. Uh, this is a. This is a. This is a. Um, a couple of uh, uh, flat cars uh, from then Hartog Company of the Netherlands. Uh, the two two of the cars are from uh, AAE, which is the largest freight company in Europe, uh, who purchased VTG, which are many of you are familiar with, a couple of years ago. Um, these two cars are actually you, you notice that these have these are white and, and these are black. The white ones are actually owned by the company, and the black ones are leased. So there is some significance. Uh, it was also pointed out to me that in real life they would not be mounted on the cars this way. This was just done because it looks nice. In real life they would have put the loads over the axles, uh, and so there would have been a, the, 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 this one would have been over here, and this one would have been over here, and, and there would have been a gap in between just for weight distribution purposes. It just looks nicer this way. And if you notice the locomotive down here uh, below it. Uh, it was pointed out that um, that locomotive looks like an American prototype, and we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that on the next on the next slide. Uh, uh, in Rotterdam, there's a company called Rotterdam Rail Feeding, which is a, a actually is a subsidiary of an American company. And uh, when he mentioned this, I I, I go, huh? I said, what is what is he talking about? Paul's nodding his head, but apparently. Um, <coughs> there's a company called Genesee in Wyoming, which is an American short line railroading holding yes. company that owns yeah. and maintains, believe this or not, 120, I got this off of Wikipedia, so you know it's got to be correct. <laughs> they own or maintain, this Genesee in Wyoming company, owns and maintains an interest in 122 railroads in the United States, Canada, Belgium, Netherlands, Australia. Poland, the United Kingdom, and operates more than 13,000 miles of own and lease track. And where is its headquarters? Darien, Connecticut. Nope. Wow. Wow. And they own the Providence Moose Railroad, so I see the same paint scheme down there okay. quite well, a bit. Okay. <laughs> this, this is a PDF file that I got yeah, from Markland, just board. but I inserted, I inserted this next slide. Uh, yeah, okay. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I mean, it's Australia, you know, it, it, it's, it's distinctive, but but yeah, but as you can see, as, but as you can see, they carried it, they carried it through from from uh, onto this one, the the R R F for for Rotterdam feeding, 
Uh, it's the same as Genesee, uh, Wyoming, the, the, the parent company. The same exact logo, just different letters in there. So I just found that kind of, uh, and you can see they they paint it, they paint everything orange, black, and yellow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, we have one of those. Those are uh, Australian yeah. units there is that on the top. With an EMG? Anyhow, the the Markman version here. I'll go back to that very briefly. We're almost done. Um, this is a G2000 diesel locomotive, which was uh, not with this paint scheme, of course, but it was in the Markman program a few years ago, and it sold out very quickly. Uh, uh, there was a high demand of this for it in the in the in the Dutch in the Dutch market, uh, which happens to be uh, Markman's third largest market. I found out. Mm -hmm. The Dutch are big in the trains. Who's the second? My, mm, no. <laughs> no, no, my my guess would be Switzerland. Uh, my yeah. guess would be Switzerland. Yeah, I never, I, and I wouldn't have guessed Holland to be, uh, or the Netherlands, uh, to be to be the third. I would have thought it maybe would have been Austria, but uh, apparently that's not, not. Well, and when he says the Netherlands, he might actually mean the Benelux countries. But then again, I don't think Luxembourg buys too many trains either. So, <laughs> anyhow, uh, the original one was uh, um, was a uh, road number was 1101. So this would be the next one in the series. 1102 uh, sounds are the same as in the first model, um, but you could actually take the old the old one and the new one here and double head them, so it, it would look prototypical because uh, that that is the way they they run uh, mostly where uh, uh, they come out of uh, Rotterdam and then they'll go to, to to places where they'll they'll hook them up with an electric locomotive for electric service. So okay, now I have a note here that says to skip ahead. To the Danish section for some reason. Ah, here we are. Oh, I know what it is. To the Danish Vectron, because we're going to come back to this. Um, the this is this is uh, what I spoke to about earlier. Apparently, the Denmark didn't hadn't gotten a new locomotive in 30 years. So when when this one was introduced into the Danish uh, uh, market, we're talking about real trains now. Uh, this this this. A lot, of, a lot of people got very excited, both uh, you know people who enjoyed real trains as well as the model trains. Uh, the first, the first versions of which were delivered last year, and they've got about 15 in running in service now. Mostly, mostly, but not exclusively, mostly for passenger service um, within Denmark, but some also going uh, to Sweden and Germany. Um, this one that was pointed out it has only two pantographs, so it can handle, uh, but but that's enough to handle. The, the, the current differences between Denmark and Sweden and, and Germany. And uh, it was also noted that future articles in Markland's magazine will go into more, more details. Uh, minor differences here are in the printing on the body shell, but otherwise it's very similar to the other two models you've already seen. Now, I'm going to back up here. Um, because if you notice, the, 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 the German and Swiss ones had um, Freight uh, attached to them, uh, but this is this is this is this is what's being hauled around in, in Sweden, and uh, the, the these cars are. Uh, and sorry, thank you. In, De in Denmark, um, these are not exactly 100% prototypical cars because apparently the, the the Danish market required some different uh, tooling. I'm talking about the real ones, so it's a different modification, safety equipment, that type of stuff. The paint. The paint scheme is, is perfect, we were told, uh, but they used the, the regular Markman German German uh, prototype models to make them. They didn't make new molds or anything like that. So, but the paint scheme is is authentic. It is it is original. Uh, so that's all to be said. Those wagons like dwarf the locomotive. It did look strange. Yeah. 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 Well, though, in in, in 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 real life, those those bi-level cars are. Uh, they, they are they are pretty so tall. It looks like it can do push pull, Robert. I mean, yes, I, yeah, yes. This yeah. is this is the this is a control car. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't know. I'm assuming it's got a a, a pickup shoe uh, at this end here, and, and a mechanism that will change the direct the, the yeah. colors. Uh, the, the, shirt, the other end, that's your Car has a lighted and imprinted train destination sign. The cab is interior detail. White triple headlights shine when it's train being pushed. 
and uh, being when it's being pulled, uh, it's got dual red marker lights. Yes. Of course, if one wanted to put a decoder in there to do such operations, Mike. Yes. One, one, <laughs> one could. <laughs> I just had to make sure he, he was awake. This is actually the end of the, the presentation of the, the rolling stock. Uh, I'm just going to take one minute more just to point out for those of you who have any of these older uh, Thunderbox or Donnerbush and cars, there is a there are two lighting kits. Uh, actually, it's one lighting kit available now with two different um, uh, types of pickup shoes that you can attach to it to retrofit. Uh, one for the coaches, the parent, the, the baggage car uh, is a slightly different length um, uh, to, to be able to accommodate a pickup shoe. So these are this is what it, the, the parts look like. To, uh, to, if you want to uh, light them interior, and for some reason, for some yeah, reason, these sure. didn't these these are new items for this year. They are in the startup uh, brochure there, but they're not in the new items brochure. I actually brought, I believe, one of these here. I had an extra one. I think it's a very colorful of your sport car, and a and a, a, a different <coughs> uh, tank car. For some reason, again, they're not in the in the new items brochure. They <coughs> accidentally got left out. It's my my, my uh, what I figure, uh, but so they figured they'd put it in and, and the, just list them in the summer items brochure. And Markland Magazine cars for this year. And do I do I need to go into the Z and the HO? I, I'm happy to if one wants to, but uh, um, this is a what they call a rabbit hutch uh, design. Uh, and the first time they've ever done something like this in Z, this is actually the control car. This, this is a train is being pushed. This is actually the, the, the controlled car, and uh, it's the first time they've had uh, this sort of thing uh, in Z scale. Uh, a locomotive to, to go with it, a class 18, and the new design the locomotive. Uh, this is a what they're calling their museum passenger train set. It's not exactly prototypical, but again, this is E-scale, but it's a, it's a nice, it's a really nice uh, reasonably priced starter set, even though these cars wouldn't necessarily go together in real life. They wanted to make something that would look attractive. Uh, it's a nice starter set. Uh, and uh, this, this is, this is interesting. This is this is a real picture. This isn't a model. This is a real picture. What they would do is at the end of the day, when when all of all the rail buses would collect at one end of the route, oh. they they'd haul they'd, they'd string them all together and they'd haul them back to start from the other direction the next day. Uh, this is um, I do have a note or two on this for anybody who's interested. In, uh, uh, what do I say about this? Um, First time being produced as a late as a late uh, the late era version, uh, era five, uh, in this particular paint scheme, paint steam scheme, uh, circa late 1990s with the modern DB logo, and uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, again, this and now we're in the one scale. There's only I think three items here, and I'm done. Mm -hmm. This is this thing's absolutely gorgeous. Actual size. The, actual <laughs> size. Yeah. What's that? Actual size. Actual size. Yeah. 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 This thing, this, this, this thing is amazing. I, I, I think I still have an HO one available if anybody wants an HO version. This black John, just gorgeous. Yeah, it'd be cheaper to get the HO one and stand very close. Yeah. John will take a Tesla and. Equal exchange. That's depreciated quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is very simply. This is a new, a newer version with a different road number of, uh, of the same type of uh, state car. And they've got some railroad workers here with their, with their clothing. Uh, that, yeah, that, 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 that is back. it. That okay. is it. That's it. Right. Thank you for it. indulging me. <laughs> Thanks for filling in yet again for the oh, well, educational part. Okay. Well, did, 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 Mike, uh, did, did you want me to go into something else here or now? Or, uh, yeah, after you had a couple of other things on the first. agenda. Yeah, on, well, I mean, people are interested. You know, I, I don't well, know. why don't we take a, a show of hands? Cause Mike had one thing there he wanted me to talk about MFX briefly. 
Um, is there a need to talk about MFX, or does everybody have a pretty good idea what MFX is, or should I take just two or three minutes and expound on the on how it works and what it is, or I don't have to. That sounds great. Want me to? Okay. Yes. Well, well, briefly, MFX is a, is a it's a protocol just like the Mark on Motorola or or uh, or DCC protocol. It's just a, a mechanism of, of electronically communicating uh, with the locomotive. Uh, unlike other protocols, it's bidirectional, which means when you put your locomotive on the track, the locomotive sends electricity, it sends a signal out over the rails, and the controller, if, if you have such a controller, like a mobile station or a central station, it's communicating back and forth. And what a lot of people don't understand uh, or sometimes uh, I should say misunderstand is the fact that they'll get a locomotive, forget what type of locomotive, they'll just get a locomotive, they'll put it on the track and say, oh, it's not, it's not communicating with the central station, I'll try the address that, you know, the class 24 locomotive, I'll just put in 24, that's what it says in the manual, and it should start running then. And the answer is no. If it's, if, if it's an MFX decoder, and you have a controller that, for lack of a better term, understands MFX. The only way you're ever going to get that to work is via that MFX communication. That Markman address, that 24 or 80, whatever the, the 1 to 80 addresses that may have been on there for use in the older systems, will not work under any circumstances, bar one, which I can get to in a moment, and will not work back and forth. If it's an MFX decoder working with an MFX controller, that's the only way it's going to work. The only exception to that is if you were to actually go in, program the locomotive to ignore the MFX protocol, which I can't believe anybody would want to do. There'd be no reason to do it. Uh, that's the only way you're going to get that old Markman address to work. It's nice to have the Markman address if you put it on a 6021 or an analog system or something like that. It, 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 it'll still run, and that's one of the nice things about the Markman locomotives. They're all you know, backwards compatible, but again, if you have an MFX decoder, and you know if you do, because on the end of the box, there's a little thing that'll say MFX or MFX plus or something like that, and you're putting it on a track, the only way it's ever going to communicate with a mobile station or central station is via that protocol. And that MFX, it's kind of hidden. It's like it's it's like an Ethernet address. Okay, it's unique. It's unique to that. It's unique to that chip. Okay, and you can take five. Exactly the same locomotives, same same Markman number, same road number, same everything. Put it on the track, and you can see one after another is going to pick up the five different MFX. It won't tell you that you know it's this this 16 or 32 bit address or whatever. It just knows which it knows which one is which. Even even if you don't, it knows which which decoder goes to which locomotive. And the beauty of all that is, you can program it. From and you don't have to, and you don't have to. As a matter of fact, you don't ever want to try and program one of these locomotives on your on your uh, uh, programming track. Okay, the programming track is specifically for I'm going to say non Markman MFX locomotives. Some like like DCC, for example. Okay, if you have a DCC locomotive, you have to use a programming track because that's just a one-way communication. Okay. You, you write out to it, and then the decoder reads back, but it, it, it's not going back and forth at the same time. That's what the programming track is for. And the programming track is also for marking signals and, and, and like M83 and M84 decoders that you want to program. That's fine. But for a locomotive, for a locomotive, you always want to introduce it onto your marking layout, putting it on the main track, not the program. You put it on the main track, that, that handshaking go back and forth with the, the decoder. And everything will be fine. It'll come up. It'll tell you what the name of it is. It'll know what functions it, it supports, uh, and, and everything else. So I hope that clarifies things because so many people, so many times people say, "Well, I got this locomotive and it's not communicating back and forth." And so I use, I tried to use, you know, address whatever 2478 or one of the generic addresses, and it wouldn't. Well, of course, it's not. Okay. And they say, "Well, what do you mean, of course?" And I have to go into this this whole speech. So I hope that clarifies things. If anybody got any questions, please, I'm happy to, 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 to clarify any of that. Okay? Thank you. Great. Okay. <laughs> if you want one of you to do your car thing, or well, we, we can do that privately, or people want to do it privately. Okay. And if anyone wants to chime in and watch it, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for indulging. Thank you for everybody online. Okay. All right.
right, so we have lunch here. We'll send you a picture of a sandwich. Yeah, water, <laughs> beer, yeah, water, water and beer out on the porch. Yeah. I've already eaten. You don't have to call it German. <laughs> <laughs> like a, the, uh, the train room upstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. No food there. The pandemic project. <laughs> 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 oh, thanks. Well, well, I've got a couple of okay, boxes. Okay, we can this one up. couple boxes with some trains and stuff to, to sell if anybody's interested. So we can also set that up outside. Yeah, fine.